Good morning. We have Wes Anderson with us here from the, the downtown Church of Christ in, in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, glad to have him here this morning. Um, rather than repeat such, some of the biographical information that's, that's on the back of your bulletin, I'll just tell you why he's here. Um, earlier this year, Fred Washington asked the Missions Committee to consider supporting the inner city work of the downtown Kansas City Church, and we're hoping and praying about being able to do that in our coming budget year. So it's good to have uh, Wes with us this morning. Well, good morning, Riverwalk. I have a big mouth and I don't stay up in the pulpit much. Um, is that me? <laughs> First of all, let me thank Matt Reese for uh, opening the door for us to come here this weekend. Uh, he did a very, very good job with getting us all lined up. He got a little bit nervous and called me about 10 minutes before we were supposed to be here. I didn't know about the parade down the street and all that was going on, but we made it all right, and so we're thankful. It's, it's good to be here this morning. We're thankful uh, to your elders, uh, to Larry and Rob and Jay and Robert for allowing me this space and time. I really feel like I'm in good company today. Uh, Curtis is a former graduate of the Sunset School of Preaching, formerly Sunset School of Preaching, now SIBI, and so is Brother Gilkey. Uh, so all three of us are graduates of Sunset. So I feel right at home this morning, but I promise not to take off my shoes. <laughs> it's good to be here. If you have a copy of God's Word, if you'd be turning over to Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, I'll meet you right in verse 41. Luke 19 and verse 41. When you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say wait. All right, you should be there about now. If you have it, say amen. amen. Well, it sounds like most are there. The Bible says, and when the city came into view, I'm reading from the new, uh, the message translation. When the city came into view, he wept over it. If you had only realized this day and everything that was good for you, but now it's too late. In the days ahead, your enemies are going to bring up their heavy artillery and surround you, pressing in from every side. They'll smash you and your babies on the pavement. Not one stone will be left intact. All this because you did not recognize and welcome God's personal visit. I want to talk to you this morning on the subject, what the world needs now is hope and love. What the world needs now is hope and love. You may remember back in the 1960s, Burt Bacharach was responsible for helping uh, put the musical notes to the song, What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love. During a time when the world was uh, in an upheaval, during a time when uh, we were at war with Vietnam, during a time of civil unrest in the world, the call for peace was there. But Jesus writes at a time when he recognized the fact that there was much civil unrest in Jerusalem. He talks in a time when both men and women lost a great deal of hope, 
not only economically, not only educationally, but also they lost hope in their own spiritual lives. And how many of us recognize the fact that even in the United States and other parts of our world, people are losing a great deal of hope? losing hope in their government. Most people say that Washington cannot figure it out. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but they're saying Washington cannot figure it out. Jesus knew the history that, that he was involved in. He knew the fact that many of the prophets before him were slain. But he would walk right into Jerusalem anyway, knowing that he was going to be killed. That he was going to be hung on a Roman cross. He went anyway. Why did he do that? Because he looked into the face of the damned and saw that they needed a savior. That they needed someone to bring them out of their lostness, to bring them out of their lost condition. Jesus knew their past, their present, and he understood that if they didn't get it right, that they were going to lose their future. And shortly after he spoke, years would go by and the fall of Jerusalem would come in 70 A.D. I live in places where there's just not a lot of hope. I live in places where people don't know their right hand from their left. There's a man who knocks on the door and he says, Preacher, have you got anything to eat? He said, anything, I don't care what it is. Do you have anything to eat? I said, hold on a moment. Go sit down and I'll be with you in just a moment. So I walked back into the pantry filled with all kinds of items and I began to grab this can, that box, this bag, and I bring it back to the man and he pulls out his army knife and begins to cut the can open. And he consumes it right in front of me. And he says, thank you very much. And he walks out the door. A woman walks into our worship service with a bouquet of dead flowers. She begins to walk around asking, does anybody want these? Does anybody want these? My mama is dead. And I had to quickly lock in on that because I knew my brethren were about to pick her up and carry her out. I said, ma'am, ma'am, I'll take them. And she began to walk around in the church and utter all kinds of what we call nonsense. And I let the church know you know, that's one of God's creations right there. You don't stare it down. You love it. You have compassion. A young man walks in with a dry mouth. You can hear it. And he sits there and he begins to swear and say, I don't believe any of this stuff. I need a couple of dollars. And I quickly had to walk over to the man and put my arm around his shoulder. My brethren said, we need to get him out of here. He smells like urine. These people need hope. These people need compassion. These people need to know that someone loves them and how we can bring them from the abyss of their despair. A prostitute early in the morning knocks on the door. 
I faintly heard it. And then she began to ring the doorbell. And I come to the door and I look out the peephole. And there she is, hair drawn back. And just behind her is two police officers. And I open the door and I say, yes, how can I help you? Please, Pastor, please tell them I'm a member here. No, officer, she's not a member here. But how can we help you? Thank you, sir. We just needed to know. And before closing the door, there are needles in my flower bed. And there are prophylactics in another one. People need hope. People need hope because there's so much despair. 150 Two homicides this year in Kansas City. Before the year is out, we're working on at least 175. What does the world look like to us? What do we want the world to look like? The world needs hope. The world is filled with despair. Fentanyl, mental illness, nationwide mass shootings again. In Maine, that happened. I'm dreaming constantly of what a better world looks like. And that was the purpose, isn't it, in which Jesus came. Why did he come? Luke 19 and verse 10 said it right there. For the Son of Man came to do what? Seek and save that which was lost. And they need to be found. What can we do to bring hope? Aren't we the salt? Aren't we the light of the world? Yes, I am, Jesus. You said that. You said that I was the light of the world. You said that I was supposed to help show people the way. You said I was the salt, right? I'm supposed to influence, and sometimes I don't do it. And I'm sorry. Is the world ever going to get better? The late Richard Rogers, from the school I went to, Brother Gil, he said something very powerful that will resonate and stay with me for the rest of my life. 1988 and graduation of June. He said, brethren, this is my hope and prayer for you. That when you leave this place, that God will send you to the darkest hellhole on earth in order that the gospel of Jesus might shine that much brighter. When my wife and I ended up in Kansas City, we said to one another, I think we found our hellhole. I think we found it. What can we do to bring hope? Christians need to take the high road, don't we? I'll get that for you. Hey, let, let, me, let me help you. Hey, you, you go ahead of me. All oh, this crazy driving we doing out here, uh, sometimes you just need to let them go because it's crazy. Here, take my seat. Hey, let, just let them get over. I'll help with that. Hey, I'm sorry. Can I help your child? But I need you to understand 
And a lot of what Brother Gilkey said in his prayer was very meaningful to me. He talked about the compassion and the love of God, didn't he? He talked about how God was merciful. And I believe that all Christians, if we're going to help make this world better, we're going to have to be a part of helping do what needs to be done in order that we might bring a greater measure of hope. How many of y'all like uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken? Oh, maybe, maybe I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> maybe it's Chick-fil-A. Oh, my, oh, okay. But listen, I love me a little bit of crispy, but I love the original. But that's not really what I want to talk about. I really want to talk about something different. Can anybody see these letters? Would you say these letters for me? Here we go. KFC. And we're going to work on KFC just for a little bit. Can we do that? Y'all sure are quiet this morning, but that's all right. If you have your Bibles, go over to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 32. Here's how we can help bring hope and love into the world. A little bit of kindness, a little bit of forgiveness, a little bit of compassion. Paul says to the church at Ephesus, be kind to one another. There's your key. Tenderhearted, forgiving. There's your F. Each other, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. King James will say, and compassion. God's done more for us than we could ever dream of doing for ourselves. Wouldn't you agree? He's been kind. He's been compassionate. He has called us to do the same. It starts right with us in the body of Christ. Be kind. Be forgiving. Be compassionate. Now, I want you to say, when I say everybody needs a little bit of, that, that's how it's going to work, okay? Let's practice again. Everybody needs a little bit of, all right, I think you all got it, all right. So everybody needs a little bit of KFC. Love people more than they deserve to be loved. It is a compassion that we must have to help drive this world in a different direction. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, you know it, but God demonstrates his own love for in this, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 7, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. You see what God has done? Keeps on being kind to us. And then he forgives us. Psalm 103, verse 11 and 12. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, So far, he has removed our transgressions from us. People need our compassion, not condemnation. There's enough condemnation going on in the world already. We need to have a solution. Our solution in Kansas City, and should be throughout the brotherhood and the world, ought to be to love people even before we meet them so that they understand the love of God. I heard one new convert say, I just love this church. I just love this church because y'all love me. Y'all don't judge me and you love my kids. 
my son who is deformed, my daughter who has sickle cell. You just love us and you understand us. We need to have this. When husbands aren't getting along with their wives and wives aren't getting along with their husbands, everybody needs a little bit of... When your boss won't treat you right and give you a raise that you know you deserve, everybody needs a little bit of... When a woman and her children are hungry... Everybody needs a little bit of when they cut you off on the highway and put up a bad finger. Everybody needs a little bit of when you get called out of your name and everything but a child of God. Everybody needs a little bit of when your friends, your so-called friends are lying on you. And you know they're not telling the truth. Everybody needs a little bit of when hate is being filled in the world, like the things that are going on over there in Israel with Hamas and the Palestinians, everybody needs a little bit of... We all need a little bit of KFC. And that's why Christ came. Came to give us his very best. I'm done, y'all, but I want you to know that the Lord loves you so much that he was willing to lay down his life. He was willing to have all the life blood torn out of him so that he might give you an opportunity to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you have not done that today, you can do that. Well, preacher, how can I do that? You can do that by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You must believe that he's the one that God sent into this world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge it or to condemn it, but through him the world might be saved. And then you ought to repent of your sins. That means you got to change your mind about the way that you're living. Jesus said, unless you repent, you're going to perish. Luke 13 and verse 3. And then you ought to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. And then you can go down in this watery grave of baptism. Have all your sins washed away. Mark 16, 16. Acts 2 and verse 38. Are we going to sing an imitation song? When you hear this song, that's your opportunity to walk down these aisles. And we will baptize you into Christ. Or if you just need the prayers of the saints here, come now as we together stand and sing. <laughs>